Where does the VSWR reflected power go? In heat? Well partly, but there is still some left over. Let me describe the complete journey and explain how it seemingly disappears. Energy leaves the transmitter and enters the coaxial cable. While running in the transmission line, some energy is dissipated as he. Most hams know that all coax has an inherent loss, but with good quality coax, this is very low. Let's suppose our antenna has a high VSWR. The surviving energy hits the mismatch point, where the high VSWR antenna is connected to the coax. A fixed percentage of energy goes to the antenna, but the remaining is sent back on the same coax. So, now what happens? Well, this returning energy runs back on the cable, and some of it gets dissipated again by the same cable attenuation that it met on its forward run. Once again it is dissipated as heat. But, you won't be able to feel this heat because it is spread right along the coax length. Now, we get to the interesting bit. We still have some power that has survived both trips. It's got to go somewhere. Well, the remaining reflected energy hits the transmitter. The poor old transceiver takes it on its chin. Wow, so how does it cope with this? Well, as we know, all modern transceivers protect themselves, and as the VSWR rises, so the transceiver power output is reduced. That's why you need to keep your VSWR low or employ an antenna tuner, or, more accurately, an antenna matcher. But, the commercial ham radio market normally use the term ATU. And that, my friends, is the full story.